This is a quick demo of um, how to use Lightroom, Adobe Lightroom, as a front end for uh, working with Cinema DNG files. The files I have here are from the Iconoscope company, the Swedish camera manufacturer, and I just downloaded some of their sample files and I have them um, in the import tab in Lightroom and there's I think probably 50 files or so here and we actually don't need all of them we just need the first one in the sequence because we'll be loading them into After Effects as uh, basically a raw image sequence so I'm going to uncheck all of them and just check the first file in the sequence and go ahead and import that the reason we want to use Lightroom as a front end for working with uh, Cinema DNG files is just because of the sophistication and flexibility of the tools. You just have um, a lot of control and, and very subtle control over the raw import process. So the first thing we're going to do is just switch into the develop module and um, this is a monochromatic image so um, we're going to just switch to black and white to start with and then we're going to quickly just do a sort of auto adjustment to see how that looks and now we're sort of getting warmer um, in the process we can also just crop this down to the full HD resolution okay get rid of those black borders and now there's some um, some really great controls you can use in the histogram you can actually um, just click and drag in the histogram and start manipulating some of, in this case, the shadows. I want to take the blacks down darker. And I might look at some of the highlights or the whites and maybe just punch those up a little bit. Something in there. Um, you can also work directly on a kind of curves uh, interface here. And one of the nice tools I like is to just click on here and then pick a section of the image and click and drag in there and then where you can watch the curves kind of manipulating there so you don't have to guess where the point is that you're working on something maybe like that take some of these darker sections I don't want to crush it too much we can also do our clip indicators and see if we have anything um, that's clipping you can see over here let me just take some of these lights and go up and you can see the red is indicating that we've got some some clipping if I take that too far up so we won't do that okay I can turn that clip indicator off and maybe that is a little too bright in there a little too dark all right um, the other thing that we can do because it's a monochromatic image is um, we could of course adjust the sensitivity of the different colors in creating that black and white image but for now let me just show you one other interesting thing the split toning is a great control where we can actually <clears throat> do a kind of duotone process so I'm just gonna working on the highlights now I just want to warm those highlights up so I'm exaggerating this by using a lot of saturation just to pick a nice kind of sepia tone okay and then um, also there's a lot of control so if I just click on the word saturation I can then use my plus and minus keys to dial that in and if I hold the option key down I can go in very small steps a little easier than using the mouse back and forth so I can dial that in the way I want it and then on these shadows I'm going to turn the saturation up just to see what my color is and go with maybe kind of very cool blue and now if I click on saturation I can use my minus keys to dial that back down hold down the option key and sort of precisely dial that in okay that's looking good so let's just say that that's um, what we want there's obviously oh let's do one other thing we can do a little bit of a vignette so if we click on this if we go down we have a lot of vignette and you can see that we've now crushed these blacks so far that we're clipping so actually let's leave that on and let's go up until we're not clipping and then maybe just a little bit darker around the edge and then a nice thing we can do also is just toggle 
oops, sorry, toggle these effects on and off. And okay, somewhere around there. That's off. That's on. Might be just a little too much. Okay, it's just a nice little vignette. Okay, once we've made all our adjustments, then we can right click, go down to metadata, save metadata to file. We'll get this message that just explains what that means. Click on continue, and now we have one image that has our um, import our raw settings set up the way we want them. So the next thing we'll do is just jump into After Effects, go import file. We will look for that first one, which is right here. It automatically knows that we're working on a camera raw sequence. And as we import that first one, we get the regular Adobe raw uh, import dialog box. We can just click through that since we've already done that using Lightroom. We have our image sequence here. Let's just make a new sequence. And what's cool is that that metadata has then populated through all of the frames of our sequence. So if we do a quick RAM preview, we can see that those color adjustments and tonal adjustments we did in Lightroom have propagated through all of the frames of our raw image sequence. And then from here, we can do our regular After Effects work. So that is a quick tutorial on using Lightroom as a front end for importing raw cinema DNG files and um, opening them later in After Effects.